Hi everybody. Welcome to the live. Hi. We gotta give everybody some time to come. Come on in. Hi, Melanie, the moderator. Uh, midget, four feet, nanny's, nanny's world. Hi. Hi, John Eats. How you doing? Is it just Nani's world? Can everybody hear me okay? I'm always checking the mic. Checking the mic. How's everybody doing this Saturday night? Hi, California Bombshell. We've been working. Today is Clean Saturday, all family cleanup. So, but I am here. I am here. I've been listening to all of you guys' lives, and I've been cleaning and multitasking. Tiana has had her first sleepover tonight, so we've been busy. I've been busy, 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 busy. Hi, Chef. How are you? You made it to the live. Welcome. So this live is going to be about gardening. I know I've been doing a lot of stuff, but um, I started this live based on my want, wanting to learn how to garden. So if you are new to gardening or you have been gardening for a while, you are welcome welcome to be here or if you just um, came to connect and listen to our gardening stories <laughs> or my questions we can talk so welcome and thank you for coming Um, I'm going to try to be on here for some time, even though I am exhausted, I'm going to try to stay on for a little bit tonight to make sure that, um, our questions are answered and we can connect, um, in a way that is helpful, healthful, and, uh, that we get all of our gardening questions answered, so. Um, I was in Chef's and Morris live last, I believe, maybe not, but, um, she's so excited about gardening. She's been gardening and she's so excited about gardening. And I think that she hasn't been gardening at her fullest potential is what I gathered from it. And. I think that me coming into her life and kind of sparking that interest about gardening has just got this flame going under her. And she just so, so, so excited about gardening. And I'm so happy that you you made it tonight. Um, and I'm so excited that uh, we get a chance to share some stuff about gardening today. <laughs> I hear that excitement in your voice. It's much like um, I, I'm outside whispering when I get excited. I've been named the uh, garden whisperer. When I get excited, I get quiet. When I get, um, that's just one of my 
Um, hey, Zoe, you made it. Hi, Zoe. It's good to see you, Zoe the Gardenista. Hi. So, um, much like when I'm in the garden and uh, I get out there and I see things happening, I just, I feel this excitement because gardening is not easy. It's work. It's work out there. So no matter why you started your gardening venture, whether it's to become sustainable and have your own food or whether you um, just needed a place to, as a sanctuary, to go and get some peace and quiet and just be able to be productive at, it's, it's exciting. I get excited. So, hi everybody. Hi, Backyard Gardener. Hi, Miss Pool Roller Sarah. Hi. I'm glad that you guys came. Hi, Pandy's hair. I was um I just I get excited when I'm when I'm out there. Not um not when I have to do all the work though. I'm sorry. Excuse me. All the work, I was like, this is work. And today when I went out there to do my garden walk and I saw that hornworm, you guys didn't even see. I was about to drop my phone and run. <laughs> but um, because I have been watching and completely absorbed and learning I knew what it was. I knew what it was when I seen it. And so, and I, the, the videos that I've been watching, I've been seeing people throw their hornworms to the chicken. That's why I said, if I had a chicken, I'd throw this hornworm to the chickens. Cause that, that's what I seen. And, and to really see that in my yard was like, wow, I must be doing it. I must be doing good because now the pests that I've been seeing in everybody else's yard is, they made it. They made it over here. So that's what um, I was excited about to do today. So how's everybody else? Um, I am in zone 9B. So if you've seen any of my gardening videos, you know that I, I came to the conclusion that I need to garden like I'm in zone 9B. So if you guys will please share what zones you're in and how long you've been gardening, that would be good. And then we can go from there. Um, I am going to be making... So yeah, this is, everybody's connecting to the live, which is awesome. Chef and Moore is in zone 7B, and I started in May of this year. So you started, um, so you knew, you knew to, you knew to gardening. And um, my first thing to do, because I've been watching people who had way more experience than I did. So my first thing that I wanted to do was just grow in anything that I can put a seed in. Just anything. Just grow anywhere. Just I was even thinking about getting a um, another plot of land. But I said, let me... Um, I feed my hornworm to the cat, Zoe said. 
now I check my early girl tomatoes every day for them. Like that? It had something. I don't know if you guys saw the close-up that I did on it, but it had like something around its <laughs> mouth. And I was like, that must be more babies. I got to get rid of you. You can't stay. You cannot stay here. As much as I've been nurture, nursing these tomatoes to make sure I get some tomatoes, you cannot stay. I put that thing on a plate and put it in an area. And there's always birds back there. So I think they they just missed that one. I really do. I hadn't seen it before. And I really do just think they just missed that one because I went back out there and it was gone. Those birds ate that one. They, the birds got it. So, but I'm excited. I'm really excited about my little garden. Um, the other day, you know, it's exciting for me to see it, but then to see my husband brought his friend over and was showing off the yard to his friend. I was on live when he did that, if y'all remember. And I was like, well, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> so I feel excited just the way you guys do when you, um, <coughs> excuse me, are uploading, um, are, when you're uploading your uploads, I get just as excited to see what you guys' reaction, reactions are. Backyard Gardener says, I have not seen a horn worm yet. Um, <clears throat> it, even though I had seen it before on the videos and, and the stuff that I had watched, you know, the, the videos from you guys, it's still, it's huge. That thing was huge. And when I cut it, I heard the thump on the plate. And I don't know why I, I ran in the house. First, I, I said, let me knock it off. And I was like, it wouldn't move. Those autumn little bitty legs that you see on it, they are basically glued to whatever it's on. So I try to pop it off twice. And then it didn't go anywhere. I said... <laughs> Mm -mm. So I went, I don't know why I got the plate. I just knew that when I cut it, I didn't want it to fall somewhere where I can't see it because it is really the same, same color as, except for all the little beautiful designs on it. It's the same color green as the tomato plant. And I was like, my first instinct was to really run in here and don't go back to the garden. Because I'm like that with, when it comes to stuff like that. And I said, no. <laughs> you got to go. I'm not leaving my yard. It's like, I felt like, mm-mm. So. Yeah. You, if you see it and stuff, you know what it is. I think that's what helped me out. I, I really do. Um, so I'm not reading. I'm just reading things to myself and I'm not reading them out. So hold on. Uh, um, I read that part. Uh, Backyard Gardener said, I have not seen a tomato hornworm yet. And Zoe said, Georgia Zone 8A and 8B. We're still in the 90s here. Today was a cooler day around 70. Uh, Miss Who Roller Sarah said, I'm right at the zone 7A, the start of 7B, been gardening off and on, many more years off and on for about 16 years. I thought I was 11 years, but I realized I started with my first flower. That's what I was talking about with earlier with, with my little group. With my little group. Miss Full Roller said, oh, oh, I'm not going to read. I'm so thankful. Backyard Gardener said, I'm so thankful. Um, that's one of my biggest fears. Yep, they're, they be holding on to that tomato plant for dear life. It sure was because I hit it and I hit it pretty hard twice and it was still on there. And that's when I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> I said, you can't stay. You're not staying in here. You are not staying. So, um I went and got a plate, got my scissors. Y'all saw what I did. 
cut it off and put it over there where I knew the birds could see it because I didn't want to come back to it. Now, somebody said that I need to start bringing the tomatoes in because I'm sure if I seen one, there's more. There's, I'm sure there's more out there, but I really think the birds just missed that one. <coughs> but I'm going to start, as my tomatoes grow, I'm going to start bringing them in. I'm going to start bringing those tomatoes in. So I brought three in today, and they're the biggest. They are the biggest. And I brought my purple, my one purple green bean in, and my one um red cayenne pepper i brought that in today so i'm excited about my little garden <laughs> but um let me see what some of my notes are oh i know what i wanted to say so i i said that i was growing in this fall garden sweet potatoes tomatoes green beans okra corn and cow peas but there's more stuff out there than I realized that has been growing and I just haven't got rid of it. It's just still growing. So um, I have a lot of um, ginger that I stuck in a lot of different spots. So there's there's going to be a, um, a video, another garden walk video that comes out tomorrow that's going to show that. And... Um, some other things that I found out tomorrow uh, that I found in the garden so that I wasn't aware of because once I, once I get back to this busy lifestyle of mine outside of the summer, um, the fall schedule is a little bit different than the summer schedule. So I'm missing a lot right now that's growing and that I don't know about. So. Don't forget to hit that like button for your host. Let's see. Don't forget to hit the like button, you guys. And um, where's everybody? Who all is watching? Send you a care package of this unusual heat we've been having. No, thank you. I I have already um experienced the triple digit. Oh, you talking to backyard gardener because it's cold. Forty seven degrees. <coughs> yeah, that's pretty cold. That's pretty cold, backyard gardener. Um. So what are some of the reasons why um, some of you guys started gardening? Why did you start? I'll start. I'll start with why I started. Um, I started gardening because I was working on the inside of the house and some of the trees even though they were producing, they, they were not looking okay. So, um, let me see, let me make sure. Uh, one second, you guys. Oh, yes, I do. Hold on, okay. Um... checking on something right quick. Yeah, she is giving out ice cream. Okay. Giving out ice cream. Okay. 
You got a wrench, Miss Fulwell of Sarah. I just gave you a wrench because you always good. Um, and then, okay, so I'll, I'll start. Um, and then, so, so my trees were looking stressed out and my neighbor said that um, my grass wasn't nice. They said that the grass was the worst that has ever looked from the previous owner. So what I wanted to say was mind your own business and leave me alone. I'm new here and I wasn't used to um, taking care of no um, grass. I'm trying to make sure the inside is customized to my liking. And so um, then I, I came home one day and it looked horrible. And so I started uh, doing some research on um, YouTube. I started looking into YouTube and then I said, well, I don't see nothing out here without no grass. So let me see what I could do with these trees. And that's when I started finding information out about the trees. And then I said, well, if the trees are looking nice, then I can, if I can take care of some trees, then I can take care of some growing some food. Because I started looking at the people who were taking care of the trees and seeing what they were doing. So... Um, what are your garden goals behind you? Uh, so this, that's a good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, balance. And, um, that means that I can't be in the garden all day and all night. So I have I, I put there that I need a balance between family, self, and garden. And then I realized when I wasn't, um, when things wasn't growing the way I wanted them to grow, that I needed to just nurture a few plants instead of like a whole yard. I, I couldn't um, be planting a whole lot of stuff when I didn't know what I was doing. And this one is that I want to use natural fertilizers. I, I want, um, I put back to eating, which is basically just a natural way of cultivating the land. And um, because I got a water bill that was more than I would like for it to have been so I, I need free water. <laughs> and the good thing about the change of temperature is that I'm not watering as often as I used to and everything is still looking okay. Um, I am working on writing a, another jingle. I, my son got in trouble and I, I've been playing, I actually been playing um, Can We Talk by Tevin Campbell for um, days. And so he got in trouble and I heard him over there sick. And so I've been working with him to come up with a, a nice little tune for my lives so that I can use music that um, is okay. So that, that's one of my goals, to finish that up. We started it already. And then to you make sure that whatever I'm doing, to use relevant content, upload relevant content to YouTube, because I could get all kinds of sidetracked. I have a lot of goals in life, and I could, I could be uploading all kinds of stuff. But I want to make sure that um, I am uploading relevant content so the last one is bring food to the table to make sure that um with with all my energy that i'm spending in the yard 
that the ultimate goal is to bring the food to the table. So <clears throat> I had a whole chart that I could write on, but I took that down because I want everything, as you can see with my garden, things come along that I don't expect. So watch this. I could take that off. And if things change, it's a sticky. I could add it back. Or I could put a new one. I got a whole bunch of these. So I can change these. I can leave it up here. I could take it, remove it. So uh, those are the goals for right now. Uh, let's see. What are y'all saying? I started with flowers because I wanted more flowers in my yard and to get rid of my front lawn. It was getting expensive to purchase them. Yeah. Yep. I spent a small little fortune on gardening. But that's a lesson that I had to learn. So. And, and that's pretty typical when I find something that I like, I will go into it full steam ahead. And so what, I, what I've been telling myself is that you need to slow down and you need to learn. And so one of the things that we were talking about earlier is um, everybody learns differently. Like this is the reason why I, I look at many, many, many of the gardening channels is because everybody has a different gardening technique. Everybody has a different personality. So I like that. And so if you are thinking about gardening or you already gardening and you say to yourself, I'm not going to do a video on how to resolve blossom end rot because somebody in the gardening community has already done it. I've seen several videos on the solution to blossom end rot, but I slow things down. Um, one of the things that we do when we advance in things is we forget about the newcomer. We forget about the person who started or who's starting or somebody who wants to learn. And everybody has a different way of teaching. And so advanced gardeners may not understand that they need to slow all the way down for the new gardener. And so, because I work with little people that are on a kindergarten level <laughs> and I'm new, I'll, I'll slow things down. And so, um, I'm not going to not do a video eventually about Blossom and Rod because somebody else has done it. So it's coming. And um, and whatever else I like, I, I had an experience the hornworm. So I can't just say, well, I'm not gonna do this video about the hornworm because it's already been done. So I was like, oh my God, there it is, I see it. And everybody is different and how people respond to things are different. So yeah, I don't know why I said that, but that is the truth. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, see how I have notes and I have my... Yet another notebook. So... 
along with the um, slowing things down so new people can understand. I, I was thinking that, like, you know how in college they have a one-on-one -on -one course? No matter what the subject is, there's always, like, gardening 101. <laughs> That's where I am right now. I'm in gardening 101, and maybe next year I'll be in gardening 102 or whatever comes after that. And so that's kind of what I had to tell myself that um, there's a lot of gardeners that I've been watching that are way advanced than I am. And this could apply to anything. This just doesn't have to do with deal with gardening, but there's a lot of people that are have full gardens. And I just said, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm going to slow it all the way down. And I'm going to just garden whatever is growing right now and producing right now. I'm going to nurture that and see how we do with it and see how I do with it. Because sometimes I get caught up on some other subjects and I might not want to garden no more. But I, I think that this is something that I'm going I'm to carry on for a while because I like the results and I like that the results are beneficial to me. So I think that is something that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, let's see, um, I'm on StreamYard and it doesn't, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it doesn't advance the um, chat. So, um, Four Horns said, hello everyone. I'm already in my bed without my glasses. I can't read the chat. I'm here though. Thank you, Four Horns. Um, and Zoe, a Virginia gardenista, said, I started gardening because of my ancestors back home. I love learning about how things grow and also keeping my family history alive with my own children and grands. And we are not even going to talk <laughs> the dollars I spent. Yeah, I, it's crazy how I have, how, how I have seeds. Like I've been gardening for years. Um, I started, Chef and Moore says, I started because so many times when I am cooking, I realize I'm out of something, especially fresh herbs, so I just go out and get it. Uh, hello, everyone. Naughty brother of Japer. Hi. Welcome to the live. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm still gardening in 101 and taking it very slowly. My father and my grandfather were gardeners. Yes, I um I didn't realize that being in a garden was going to take me back. It did take me back and I didn't realize that um I was going to be thinking about the experience that I had with my grandmother she um she grew some stuff but mostly worms because she was more of a fisher she liked to be at the lake fishing and she, i remember taking scraps for kitchen scraps out to feed the worms more than she actually did the gardening so i'm very familiar and i hated it then i hated taking that stuff out i was like why is, at, at a young age, why is this a necessary part of life? Like, why um, must we feed the worms? Four Horns said, I got bean seeds from the kid and would plant them when I was little. So, so it sounds like we all have some, some kind of gardening experience. And that's what I found too. Like, 
it's 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 um really easy to share even not only in youtube and social media but it's really easy even when i'm at the gardening shops like um lowe's and home depot and walmart and the gardening center it's real easy to share that you're gardening and one of the things that i found is that a lot of people are either gardening or have gardened in one in one aspect or another or have seen some type of gardening going on and where i live at it's very common to see um people gardening i really didn't learn the import that important beneficial bacteria until last year backyard nurse said um Yeah. Um, I'm going to learn a little bit more about bacteria and stuff in one of gardening 110 <laughs> or gardening 102 or whatever comes after 101. I'm going to learn. Yeah. So that's, that's what I wanted to say. Um, that we weren't that that we we we've, we've learned how we've seen gardens in our years and um based on our experience we've seen the gardening but when it comes to doing it yourself it's totally different though like but then you say then i've been saying well that's why she did that <laughs> i didn't know what she was doing that for but or that's why he saved that, or that's why they did that. Because um, I'm starting to see a lot of stuff that looks very familiar, but I just didn't know why, why it was done. Like my grandmother taught me how to make jelly. So I, I've made jelly a couple of times in my lifetime and how to, how to can, but I think all that kind of goes hand, hand in hand. I think all of it is like um, a circle. Like if you gardening, then you should be, I mean, I can't tell nobody what they should be doing, but if you decide on a gardening level that you want to then bring food in the house and start preparing it or storing it for other people to see, then, then I think that kind of goes hand in hand. Or um, what else was I doing that I was like, well, I don't know how this is going to be received, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> um, something. What What is, um, what are you guys doing on your channels besides gardening? Anybody doing something that kind of goes with the gardening? Um, I just don't know what to do after everything is planted. That's the hard part for me. Well, that's what I'm learning too. I think that, and based on what I've been learning from others is that you you just, even experienced gardeners can have a surprise. Is that correct to say? Even experienced gardeners can have a, a something kind of, tossed their way that was unexpected so but I, ha I haven't been here long enough but as I watch everybody else's videos I'm learning that and I say some of the things that I'm experiencing I found that um even experienced gardeners people who have been gardening for some time have pests um have problems with germination because I was like what am I doing this stuff is not germinating but I noticed that many of you guys have a lot of rain you guys had a lot of rain and I was like we in a drought there ain't no rain coming here except for out of my hose or the sprinkler system 
<clears throat> so I can't water like that. So that's why I said, and then I kept hearing people say stuff about zones. And I was like, maybe I need to find out about myself. <sighs> so. Hi, Anna Mora. How are you? Welcome to the live. Don't forget to hit the like button, you guys. Don't forget to hit the like button for the host before you leave. Hi, lovers for healthy life. How you doing? Welcome to the live. She says, hello everyone. Learn homesteading from my great auntie. Uh, what just happened to that? Oh, there it is. She grew peanuts and would pick dan dandelion greens. You know, I just found out how peanuts are grown because one of the persons in the gardening community shared a picture a, a video of how peanuts are grown. I'm telling you, we are not born with these things in our brains. I didn't know that peanuts grew in the ground. I didn't know. I just did not know that. And what picked dandelion greens. Um, let me see. What's dandelion greens? Don't laugh at me. <laughs> What's dandelion greens? This has been very informative. I enjoyed and will definitely visit again soon. I hit the like button and on my way in, heading out now. Have a great night. Thank you for coming, Pandy. Thank you so much for coming. Um, can you tell me what dandelion greens are? <coughs> dandelion greens are um but can I yeah so duh is that like a flower? Okay, I got my uh, Google right here. Seriously. I I know. Remember that I'm I'm in um I am in gardening 101. So, if if I've been garden, well, I think no matter what you're doing and where you are, there's always something new to learn. So I was getting ready to say, if I've been gardening for 20 years and I come to you and I say something that's not a brand new thing, then y'all y'all have permission to laugh at me. But right now, <laughs> like I do know what a dandelion is. I believe it's a flower, right? Is that a flower? It's a dandelion is a flower. I will Google that right now. I still got up the hornworm on my Google. Like, I'm not afraid to use Google either. Let's see. The yellow flower that everyone doesn't like. You can pick the greens around it. And, and, and do you cook them or put them in a salad? Do you um what what is she picking for? Did she put did she put them in a salad or cook them? Let me see what she said. Okay. 
and marigold seeds before Mother's Day. Okay. And we'll put dandelion greens. Okay. I um, We look at dandelions as weeds in the grass, but there are a lot of... Yeah, I, I see those out there. Why do we call those weeds? Are they really not leaves? Because they grow. It's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of them growing out there. I've seen those. Okay. You cook them like collard greens. So, so here's the thing. I got a whole lot of those out there that I picked and tossed to the side. But I'm trying to grow collars. That's why I said whatever is volunteer, I'm going to let it come on through. Because the stuff that I've, I'm intentionally trying to grow, I'm having some issues with. But um, they taste really delicious and highly nutritious. I'm, I'm going to um, I'm gonna be trying some new things. Hi, Rocky Mountain High. Welcome to the live. Uh, let's see. Benefits of dandelion, plus how to use green seeds and roots as flower and flowers. Wow, look at that. That is awesome. I'm going to try to pick some. Maybe, I, I wonder if I could juice them. I might try to wash them up and juice them. Don't be surprised if you see me in the backyard tomorrow um, picking them and juicing them in the morning. Already growing those. And I don't have to even try to grow them. They, they're just coming. Wow. Just coming. Do you just use the flower or the whole plant for the tea? The tea we make with dandelion is naturally sweet. Really? Let me put this up here. See how much you can learn, Tisa? Okay, so um, I'm going to be doing some new things. She's, um, you use the whole plant. So I haven't tasted beets since I was a child. I'm growing some Detroit dark extra sweet beets now. I hope they're good. Me too. I, I juiced the beet today, and I'm telling you, the stuff that you get from your yard is totally different from what's in that store. It is. That beet, but um, keep, keep in mind that I used a whole pineapple. <laughs> it was good. It was really, really good. I mixed a whole lot of stuff up, but it was really good. I sipped on that. For half the day, I sipped on that juice that I made for this morning for half the day. So, Backyard Gardener says she loves beets. Um, I'm not going to say all of that. I don't love, love beets, but now I can tolerate them. Um, are flower and extremely healthy for you? I, I have many of them in the backyard. I have many of them. And I have been pulling them and putting them in the um, the compost pile. So 
I am going to be trying something new with them. Hi, original love bug. Welcome to the live. How are you tonight? We go out in the yard and pick the biggest dandelions we can find, digging up a bit of the roots with it, wash it and boil it into a hot tea. gonna be trying that. Yeah. So we're gonna be having beets. Cause I got some beets coming. My beets are did germinate. I had a um a rainbow pack of beets and they did germinate. And um that one that I had today and then I have a few other out there that are growing. And uh -oh, let me see, what else did I have? I haven't showed them yet, but I finally got um, some okra. I had I got some okra to germinate. Uh, I think I showed one or two out there today, but I got a whole pot of, uh, not a pot, but well, I got a whole pot of okra that is germinating. So seedlings. So I'm excited about that. I think it just took for me to get cooler weather. That heat was just really not doing good for any germination here. And then I got some carrots coming. So yeah, the um, they were so beautiful. Those those leaves on the beets were so beautiful. The vines. Just the vines kind of reminded me like of our vine, of our veins, the veins that were in the, the leaves that I showed you guys this morning. They were so beautiful. Oh, how happy gardener. Welcome to the live. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think that um, I'm going to, the next ones that I have coming along, I'm going to put them in like a salad. Thank you for coming, Peaches. Thank you for uh, making it to the live. And uh, good night. Have a have a nice Sunday. Is it, is it Sunday yet? I forget how late it is for you guys. Because I'm, I'm over here. It's not quite eight yet. What do you use to germinate food? Uh, I just, um, I put it, I put the seeds in the soil. I have tried the other method, which was in the paper towel and it germinated pretty good for me like that. Um, but it was just too many steps. I don't, I didn't have that kind of time. So <clears throat> I just, I didn't. I didn't feel like doing all that, but, um, and then I think I was in Backyard Gardeners Live and I was like, help me. I need to know how I'm, I'm so determined to get me some collards and some kale and some, um, collards, kale and spinach. I was very determined and she told me to put them cause sometimes the seeds aren't that great. So she told me to put them in, um, and some water and see <clears throat> if they if the seeds were good and you do that by adding them to water and I think I think help me out backyard gardener I think the ones that float to the top are not good and the ones that sink are good but I don't I don't remember the so if if somebody knows what I'm talking about say so <laughs> it's close to 11 here. Okay. So you're at Eastern. Where, what zone are you in? Oh, happy gardener. Oh, how happy gardener. What zone are you in? And where are you? Where are you from? Ziploc bags work decent. Just put it in a bag without the paper towel. Okay, so what I said about the seeds floating to the top aren't good 
and the ones floating to the bottom, that's that's right. Okay. Zone five, I think. So. And where are you? Where is, where is the zone five that you're located in? Because I found out that, like, you don't have to be in California to be in zone 9B. Like, a lot of Floridians are in zone 9B. So, no paper towel in Ziploc bag or toilet paper in Ziploc bag. Okay. When I did that, I found that, like, the seeds stuck to the paper towel or it grew through the paper towel if I left it in there long enough. But I, I mean, it's whatever works for you. Um, probably in the, you know, in the time when I, I just have all that kinds of time to, to do it, I can um, put it in a Ziploc bag. I, I'm just okay with throwing them in the ground or in a pot right now and seeing how that grows. But um, so far, so far in the cooler weather, my carrots came up too. I'm so excited about those carrots because I grew a lot of carrots and lost a lot of carrots. Uh, Chef and Moore says, okay, I have some kale seeds that I'm getting ready to plant. What should I do, backyard gardener? That's for you. I haven't done car collards in a while, but all of the kale I've grown this year have germinated in a mixture of sea moss, of, what did I say sea moss for? Peat moss, sand, and verm vermiculite. Sand. You so you you went you bought it? Did you buy the sand? Actually you're a six A. Direct so, yeah. I prefer to direct so. But and I think it's because my patient patience level is still I'm still working on my patience level. I still need the garden to work on my patience level because I'm doing so much better. I'm telling you that hornworm that I seen today, I would have usually just threw up everything and said, forget it. But I was like, no. It's a lot of work that's been going on in here. And um, I need to get back to it and I don't need to be afraid of something that I've been seeing other people um, pick up with their bare hands and give to the chickens. My carrots, carrots aren't growing. Planet sees twice, no results. Um, yeah, I, I've had that with a lot of stuff. I purchased the sand. My husband direct sold quite a bit. But the rate of, of germination, the rate of germination has not been as high as mine. Okay. I've seen people using a germination gel. What is that? A germination gel. Yeah. What's a germination gel? Okay, so I do notice. Let me let me answer that. <laughs> direct sow is when you when you put the seeds directly into the ground, and uh, when you not when when you, um, a non-direct sow, I guess would be if you uh, put it in a pot. See how I got that? Yeah. Never mind. 
so yeah that's that's um and that's how you learn how that's how I've been learning through um, watching everybody else's uh, videos watching other people's channels being in other people's lives and not being afraid to ask questions and then of course the experience that I have been getting doing things on my own and just kind of figuring stuff out as I go but with some help because I'm not afraid to ask questions Okay, so Rocky Mountain High said, it's a gel that provides moisture for the seeds. Allows you to actually see if your seeds have germination or not. Easy for sowing the seeds also. And easy for sowing the seeds also. So, so okay. I have questions about that too. <laughs> it's a gel that provides moisture for the seeds. Bedtime for me. Okay. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, oh how happy gardener. Thank you for coming by. Thank you. Good night. Put it in a pot and do what? I'm sorry. This is like man hard. Uh, like planting in a, uh, in a, a flower pot, like a, um, okay. Okay, so um, Zoe said, when you direct sow, you put it directly in the soil. Non-direct sow simply means using a peat pod, warming mat, greenhouse, grow light, etc., to grow in starter pot. This is good. Hey, next pick. Welcome to the live. Um, Chef and more said, I have a real piece of ginger I want to plant. Do I need to do anything to it? I just put it right in the ground. My, the ones that I planted, I just planted them right into the ground. And they didn't germinate oh. right away. I'm not sure why, but it took a long time for them to germinate plant and water i'm growing growing ginger also i got ginger everywhere i got ginger everywhere and um 
There are a zillion ways to start seeds. All of those are considered non-direct so as the seeds are not being sowed directly in the soil where they will sprout and grow until harvest. that part so it's been broken down let me put that up here because I think when I put it up here it, this part in StreamYard will remain even when the chat disappears. So that's why I'm putting relevant content on the screen. I haven't I haven't reviewed them yet, but I think that's what happens when you use um, StreamYard. I put a piece of ginger in the soil and May in May and nothing has happened. I guess it's still in there. It it took the ginger that I had had gone bad and I actually really wasn't expecting it to grow. I just wanted to get rid of it. And and then it started it started um growing. So the compost pile, I had different areas in the garden where I had put different things and so I forgot it was even there. It took a long time for that to come. It took a long time for that to grow. I want to start. I want to restart my garden now in zone ten. So I am going to cheat and go by start started plants and then plant around my seeds. Um, because I got a little bit frustrated. And the lack of patience that I, I'm, I'm working on, I, I bought, I got quite a few things that weren't germinated from a seed. So, like some of the tomato plants out there, they they weren't germinated from. Well, they were germinated by the store, but not my. I didn't germinate them. But um, yeah, so I bought quite a few plants. So I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, they forget about the season. And so um, it was, it, it was warm. Um, Miss Full, Full Roller said, um, did I notice whether the weather was warm when the ginger started to grow? And it, it was and that's that's also too when the um what do I want to say? The green beans. I mean not the green beans, but the um green onions. Because I have them all in the same thing. And that's when they really started to grow too, because I forgot the green onions was out there as well. And so um I uh I went out there to move some stuff around and, and notice that they were there. So it was warm. It's just now where I live at is just the weather. So we were in triple digits for weeks, weeks and weeks. And now the weather is in the fifties. So it, we went from extreme heat and now it's kind of chilly. It's cold. It's for California, 50 is cold for us. And 30 is freezing. So so he said, oh, Chef and Moore said, do you how do you compost and what do you do with it? Um So I have areas of the garden that I use to take my food scraps to and trash. So 
um, I put the compost, I put the food scraps in one area, then I put cardboard, no plastic, um, and maybe one of you guys can really break that down. Um, because I know that you need certain things to make it perfect. But um, I put that, I put, I put it all in one area and then just do like layers of it. Like I'll put the, I'll dig a hole, put the food scraps in it, then put um, cardboard or paper in that and then cover it up with more soil and then water it and then turn it over. So um, I know it needs, I believe it's not um, nitrogen, oxygen, um, water, but um, I'm still at a learning stage. I'm, I'm not really at a stage where I can um, explain that in detail right now, but I believe that I got that right because that's what I've been doing. I've been using food scraps that um, don't consist of any kind of meat or dairy. And then I put paper and cardboard from the trash in there. And I'm telling you, um, we were at a point before I started composting where we were gonna get another trash can. We have to pay for trash to be picked up. And, and my husband was saying, we need another trash can. And I was saying, we know we don't. Um, because you have to pay, if you get another trash can, you gotta pay for it. And I'm trying to cut costs in any, every way I can. So I noticed when I started taking the food scraps and, and uh, all the cardboard and all the stuff that would normally go into the trash that we have less. So having that stuff in the soil. And I mean, I did a video where I showed the soil that has, has compost in it versus soil that doesn't. And it's like night and day. So um, if you get a chance to look at that and you will see um, the difference. And you can also see the difference between the stuff that I have growing and the stuff that's been worked as well. You you can see it, it's, it's a noticeable difference. Chef and Moore, you build a compost pile like you make a lasagna, brown scraps, green, and repeat. Um, kitchen scraps, lawn, lawn clippings, coffee, coffee grinds, coffee grounds, you can use a plastic bin or a pile. Hi, um, J3GS Farms. Welcome to the live. Um, we do, Nick, Nick's pick says, we do the same thing and a family of four. I only have two small bags of garbage a week. I, I notice a difference um, in our trash and also, one of the things that I did notice, too, is there is no garbage odor back there. Like, I'm taking all kinds of food scraps and stuff back there, but there's no, my yard does not smell like it's a garbage or a landfill. It doesn't stink. And so, um, you can tell that this is really a natural way of uh, gardening. You can tell that it's, it's supposed to, I feel like it's supposed to be like that. Um, it, it, um, I think it's a lot of work. Once you get down to it, you know, it's just, once you get into the groove of, and a pattern of it, it's like, okay. So for me, it's like feeding a child. Like, you know, that you have this food. If you think of your garden scraps or your table scraps or whatever you feeding your garden that you eventually want to bring back into the house to your table, if you think of feeding the scraps to your garden, um, it's not a burden. It's like, it's not a lot of work. It's like going out, you gotta go out there to take care of it anyway. So when you go in, you just take the food scraps and put them, put them where, where you want them to be. So I don't, I don't think, I just think that it's worth it. Whatever work you putting into your garden, you can see it. 
So if you put that kind of work into it, you will be able to see it. Um, I'm scared to have a big compost pile in my yard. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I do is I, um, I have that, you saw that mixture that I put on the corn. I have a, a big spray bottle that I use and I go around the house with it and it has peppermint oil and it has, um, yeah, just peppermint oil. And I spray that all around the perimeter of the house and inside and outside. I spray that. It's uh, peppermint oil and I mix it probably, mm, I don't know, three or four tablespoons with, um, it's not even a gallon. So I go, I fill that up twice and I spray it inside and out. And I haven't had no issues with nothing except for the hornworm as I can. Oh, and, and I had some problems with some aphids, but I haven't seen nothing. I'll let y'all know if I do. I have, I haven't, I haven't seen anything. It's really not, it's not a lot of work. I don't think I have anywhere for for a compost. Um, I've heard a lot of people do a lot of stuff. Like I was in the in Walmart, walking through Walmart, and this lady saw me with the two tomato plants in my basket, and she stopped me and started talking to me about the two plants. And and I I told her I said, I don't even think I was in a month. I wasn't gardening for a month, and I and she said. I was asking her questions. I said, obviously you're an experienced gardener. And um, how can I make sure that these don't die? And she said, all you need is a small can. She said she used a small can, like a coffee can to put her, her compost in. You don't need a lot of room for composting. Good night, original love bug. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the live. Uh, let me see. Mix picks. We live. We live on the back of a canal. And let's just say we have some of the fattest field mouse around. Okay. They're finding food to eat. They're finding it whether you put it out there or not because they have to survive too. Um, they just don't have to be surviving <laughs> in your area. So you have to um, do pest control. I, I used the peppermint oil because I was told that this was a huge deterrent. Um, Zoe said, use a small plastic bucket, add a few worms. It's easy. Yeah. So it doesn't it, it doesn't have to, you know, if you get on a routine and a pattern of doing things, and then if you um just start it, just do it. And and it's it's something I, I enjoy it because I feel like it's something that like I was telling myself. Um, I can go out to my garden and it's, it's not talking back to me. Well, it is speaking to me, but, um, you hear it by what you see. It's not like, I got a lot of kids, right. And they talk back sometimes. And so when I go out there to the garden and the garden is speaking to me, basically telling me what it needs, it's, 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 it's different. That's a whole nother story though. Yeah. So um, I rather the garden speak to me in silence, though. Like it was speaking to me with the hornworm, and the, the the plants was telling me, "It's too hot, Tisa. It's not a good time to plant nothing right now. So just chill. <laughs> don't don't plant these seeds. Don't plant no more seeds because they are growing up and they are dying." Worms, 
nope, sorry, not going to get near, go near worms. Well, they're out there and they're doing their job. And, and let me just tell you that I don't have to be touching on the worms, but knowing that they're out there and in the soil, because I've had soil that they're not in, well, that I don't see them in. And nothing is okay over there. Like, nothing is okay over there. Um, but where they are, everything is so gorgeous and beautiful. And everything is looks good. Hi, Butterflies Home and Garden. Welcome to the live. She says, hi, everyone. Hope, everyone. It just, ugh, this is so... Oh, it says, hope everyone is doing well. I'm doing okay. Just a little bit sleepy, but um, welcome to the live. Thank you for making it. That's why I left it alone, too. I don't, <laughs> I don't do worms, and my yard is rich with them. So I just... I. I, there's a lot of things that I don't do, but I'm finding out that I need to get over some things. Like this garden is teaching me. My husband will file for divorce if I started. Wait, let me see. Wait, what? If I started a compost, he will think it's going to attract everything. Well, well, I don't want to touch that. Um, I don't want to touch that one. <laughs> so, got to get going. Thank you, um, Rocky Mountain High. You, Your contribution tonight was awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate you stopping in. My compost consists of goat poop, chicken poop, leaves, uh, food scraps, that the chickens eat. Ashes. Grass ashes. Um, okay, so here's a good question. I'm glad you said that because I, I have a question. I've seen people uh, burning stuff, the ashes outside, but I'm wondering if the ashes from the fireplace will do just the same. Uh I, I wonder if the ashes from the fireplace inside will do just the same thing as the ashes that you might have in a, out for a burn stuff outside. Would that do good in the garden? My entire garden is in containers. Maybe that's why it's not growing no worms. Could be. Shawana's Creative Circle. Hi, welcome to the live. Just stop by to say hello. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, let me see. Who is using meat? in the um, compost. I was kind of told that that was like a no-no. Like a no-no, like not to use meat. Hi, Supreme Family Garden. Welcome to the live. So, Miss Miss Full Roll, Roller Sarah said, let me put that up. My question was, can you use the ashes from a fireplace? And she said, yes, as long as the ashes from the fireplace 
is from logs that have not been treated with chemicals. Okay, that that makes a lot of sense. So I need to make sure that the logs that I put in there are not treated. What is a worm casting? That's, um, okay. So, like, the, these are the things that, let me see, if your container is sitting on the ground, you may have some worms in there. Okay. Um, that's what that is? <laughs> Wow. Okay, so worm castings are worm poop. And I was told that you can buy it. I guess it's um It's very interesting. That's what that is. That's very interesting. That is very interesting. That's what worm castings are. Uh, they are on my deck about two or three stories high. Are you leaving out? Let me see. Um, thank you for coming to the live Supreme Gar um, Family Gardener. He said, darn it, my wife is calling me. See y'all soon. Thank you for coming by and good night. Uh, can I scoop all the frog poop around my house? It's like that. You got you got that much frog poop, but I would think that that would be okay. But I don't know. So, AKA worm manure. Like, okay, no, Tisa, don't do it. But it's, it, it, I think I would just be okay with the worms. Because if you got the worms, you got the worm poop. Right? Like, who is separating worm poop? I don't know. But who is separating the worms from the poop? Who's, I mean, I guess you could take the worms out of their environment. Um, so people are breeding the worms to get more and to harvest the worm poop. Okay. Very interesting. The plants love it. Okay. So what do you do with the compost once you have it? Uh, by the time it breaks down, it looks like soil. So you just use that to grow in. You use it to, um, yeah, to grow in. So they have more worms for fish bait. And then they remove the worms from the castings 
so people can use it for their gardens, Miss Bullwell and Sarah said. Now this is gardening 101. Next year we gonna move up a level. <laughs> this is, I've been hearing a lot of that and I'm not there yet, so I haven't asked about it. Uh, but this is a very good question, Chef and more. This is very good. These are very good questions. So if you fish in, most people who fish do they have gardens and um yeah i i wonder about that because i've seen a lot of people um who have channels that i've come across or following i, I believe it's um if you fish and you gardening is that safe to say Is it safe to say that? So how are we doing with our time? Um, more, more, okay, yeah. I think that we did good. Uh, we covered a lot of ground, I think so. You know, back in the day, fishing and garden is how you ate. Yeah. See, that, that's what I'm saying. So if I was fishing and I'm not, then I would be bringing the fish to the table and bringing the stuff from my garden to the table. Yeah, I'm thinking that's still how it's working for those who um, are into it. Because where I live at, there's a lot, there is a lot of, the, um, there's a lot of gardeners and then we have a lot of lakes around here too. So I'm thinking that that, that might be the same. The uh, sustainability, right? Sustainability. Get your meat and grow your food, whatever you can grow. So I'm, I'm working on it. We haven't started fishing. I'm going to let you guys know if I start fishing. And then, um, then I'm going to be at Fishing 101. You use compost in your garden and containers. It's natural nutrients for your plants. Right. And that's why I was saying, too, that it, it doesn't get to be hard because if if like if you think of your garden as your baby and you know that your garden needs to be fed your child needs to be fed then you know in order to get development um or in order for your garden to be nourished you need to feed it so it, it doesn't get to be that hard it's not um it's just not Bat what? <laughs> Don't tell me that I love fishing. Okay, so when we start fishing, when we start fishing, then we're going to have to make sure we got JG Farms in the house because he knows about fishing. Okay, somebody would make a fortune if they made and sold compost or can you just buy it yeah you can buy it people sell it i saw people are are hilarious but um i, I i'm on um facebook marketplace and not only can you not get free wood chips in my area but uh I saw this person in one of the group, one of the marketplaces say, okay, I'll let you guys know when you can bring your food scraps for my composting. And then later on, she was selling it. 
she was the same person that was asking people to bring it, it was okay for them to bring their scraps I um okay so and I'll have to show that in one of my my videos but I went to Lowe's one day and they had, I believe it's Miracle Girl. They had like bags of it. It's like regular 13 bucks. They had it on sale for $2. And I got 10 bags of it. But it claims to have worm castings in it. There's a claim. It, it's supposed to. And it's supposed to be natural. And it's supposed to be like from compost. But, you know. So I have some back there and I'm a, um I'm going to show you what that looks like on one of the videos. Where can you find I'm 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 thinking that bat guano is bat poop. Where, where can you find that at backyard gardener? bat manure really okay so um let me see so the 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 um the bat you can get the the bat manure from a hydroponic store, Backyard Gardener is saying. And what would be the benefit of having like bat manure versus like a chicken or what would be, what would be the um, benefit? Go on Amazon and, and you'll see Yeah, I've seen them. That's where I heard about it from. Um, Zoe, that's where I heard. Um, I heard them talking about it. Looks like you have been going for a minute. I'm here now, though. Okay, so that's what D. Mills said. He, yeah, we've been on for a little bit. It serves the same purpose. So the manure is, um, I got to run. Good night, all. Thank you for coming to the live, Nick's Picks. Thank you for sharing what you know. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Make sure you guys um, don't forget to hit the like button on the way out. Uh, let me see. And to use it in a compost tea. So let's just say that my soil is worm rich, right? And I put a little bit of that soil that I know is full of worms. Like as soon as you uncover it, it's just worms popping out everywhere. And I put a little bit of that in some water. Can I call that my worm tea? Can I use that then as a fertilizer? Would 
without purchasing. So, like this is what I was saying when I'm when I was talking about if you a beginner or if you've been gardening for a while, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, especially if you just, you know, starting and you wanna garden, you don't you don't have to be buying everything. Um if if you um, taking your scraps out, maybe you just need a very small area that you can dig dig a hole in and put some scraps in it. What my grandmother used to do is she used to dig a hole, one hole, or actually two holes. The one hole she put the scraps in, and right next to that, she dug another hole, and that's where she extracted the worms from. So it wasn't really big to start now eventually she had a whole big old bathtub of uh, stuff out there that she was taking scraps and stuff to and um i believe she was probably giving other people worms too Zoe said, I'm not fishing near anybody's lake, river, or ponds. Miss me with that life. You'll see me at the farmer's markets. So, like, okay, me too. <laughs> but, yes. I, um, gardening is one thing, but, uh, and, I'm, and I'm learning how to work with that because I, I have some goals that I want to, um, I want to bring some stuff into the house and I have some things that I want to do. But D Mill said, I don't spend a dime. I dig up worms every once in a while and add two to each pot. In fact, it's raining now. I may do that tomorrow morning. Yeah, because the rain make the worms come up. You know, I guess if you see an area, I used to, uh, be in an area where every time it rained, you would just see the worms just trying to make their way to a, to some soil, especially if it's flooding. So I guess they real to the surface now when it's when it's raining, I guess. Yeah. So we are in about, I want to try to push this to a we're in about an hour and a half. We got about 15 more out, 15 more hours, 15 more minutes to go, 16 really, to go two hours. So um, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna end the live at two hours in. So yeah, I saw that you did a. Um, I think you was burning. Outside though, D Mills, is that correct? With the wood ash? So they can breathe. Wow. They need to come because I guess if they're flooding, they're not they're not. 15 hours yeah if you got that long you are gonna be here by yourself uh-uh do you see my eyes can you see my eyes we is not doing no 15 hours but um yeah i know let's see who come in and out of the live yeah <laughs> at 15 hours anybody else need to know anything about gardening 15 Look, two more seconds later, I'll be asleep. 
Um, D Mill said, well, here is the question. And here is the answer. Yes, from the fallen branches and leaves. Right. I told you I was cleaning all day, right? That was working. I've been in the yard, inside, outside. Yesterday, so that I didn't have to do all the clothes today, I did those yesterday. So I'm done washing. And uh, so it's been a long day. Another way of getting worms is put soapy water on the ground and they will come. Okay. So is it a good idea? Like I, I don't, I, I'm not growing a whole lot of stuff in pots, but like, is it a good idea to go out there and scoop up some soil and just put it in the stuff that I do have in pots? Instead of buying like stuff like that, can I just go dig me some soil and put? I think somebody probably said that though already. Just found out that wood ash almost all nutrients besides nitrogen just found out what ash has almost all nutrients besides nitrogen that's good to know another way of getting worms on put that up that is good to know I have used the dirt for my yard. Mm -hmm. Once, once I think that the soil is worked, I think that you can use that in your pots too. Oh wait, Zoe said no. You're killing the worms. You need the 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 worm manure. The castings mixed in the water. What kind of worm lover are you? But won't the worm live in the pot? Won't that worm live in the pot now? Don't. Why do I gotta be killing the worm? Why am I not making a new home for the worm? That's what I'm thinking. I'm not killing no worms. Won't I be making a new won't I be making the worm a new home? She said, what kind of worm lover are you? <laughs> not a one, but I need the worms because I know that yes, they will. I have found earthworms in my pots. So I'm thinking that I won't be killing them if 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 I provide the nutrients and the stuff that I need in that pot, then I don't think that the worms will die. I'm gonna come back to that though and see. I'm gonna try it, Zoe, and I'm gonna make sure that that um, I take good care of that pot and feed it properly. We have red clay soil here, so I don't want anything from the ground. So does that mean that we can't get anything from the red clay soil? Does that mean that when you said that you have red clay soil, and I've heard a lot of people say that too. I mean, I've heard people say that 
the red clay you does this mean you can't grow in red and clay is that what that means Hi, Queen B. Thank you for stopping in. How you doing? Thank you for stopping by, Queen B. We are talking about gardening. Do you have you ever had a garden? I probably have asked you this before, but um, I don't remember. As long as as there are drainage holes, they will come in and out of the pot. So, yeah. As long as there's drainage holes. We have red clay. Let me put that up there. We have red clay here as well. You can buy you can, but the roots don't grow that deep as it's hard for them to get through it. Okay, that makes sense. You, um, Zoe said, you need to go over and check out a beautiful Nest TV um, and clay soil, honey. So it's over there working that clay soil. Um, I, I watched, I watched her for a little bit and, um, I think she is working at clay soil and it's beautiful. Her garden is beautiful. It's very beautiful. Compo compost on top of red clay soil and not mixed in is fine. Nothing grows very well in anyone's yard. Even grass is hard to grow. So is that why everybody is growing? I won't say everybody. Is that why you are growing in, in pots? It's because it's hard to grow. Does it, get, does it snow and stuff there? Yeah, check her out. A beautiful nest has a very beautiful garden. And um, I'm not sure how long she's been doing it, but she has a very beautiful, I was very attracted to her garden. She has a very beautiful garden. And um, so does, um, Peaches that was here that came to the live. She, she has a very beautiful, beautiful garden backyard gardener has a very beautiful garden um miss full roller sarah is i haven't really i need to go and look at your garden i need to look at your wait let me see Let me see. Celery seed regrow. Celery regrow. Um. Let me get out of there. Let me see. Zoe. Zoe, you got a garden too, right? You have to have a garden. Don't pay attention to what I just said. Tomato hornworm. 
So Zoe has a garden too. And she was talking about her tomato hornworm. No escaping the pesky pests lurking in the garden. So there are a lot of us in here. Um, chef that um, are available. So make sure you you connect it with everybody in here. No, I was told that the soil is earth. It contains earth. Huh? I could have told. I could have been told wrong. <laughs> Chef and more, y'all shut that city down when y'all get that bitch of smell. guys so we gonna end the live in about three more minutes any more questions any more comments and or concerns we got three more minutes in this live and I I just want to say thank you to everybody who stopped by the live tonight. I will be doing a Saturday night live every Saturday. And I'll be back here too on Monday. So I haven't quite developed what I'm going to be doing on Monday, but I think it's gonna be a grow night. I think I'm gonna have a grow night on Mondays. So, um, Make sure you come back on Monday. And um, I'll be back in the morning, though, too, with my juicing. So um, if you're interested in juicing, I will see you in the morning. Um, if you're not interested in the juicing and you just really want to support your girl, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Um, but... Yeah, make sure you hit the like button on the way out and have a very awesome, beautiful night, you guys. Thank you for, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. So, good night, everybody. In like one minute. In like one minute, good night. Is anybody else watching the clock? <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you for coming. Good night. Thank you to my moderators. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys working. Thank you to the moderators. If y'all don't have these moderators and you're going live, you need to get them. Melanie, the moderator, Backyard Gardener, and Miss Full Roller. Miss Full Roller, Sarah. So that's going to end this live. I will see you guys in the a.m. Good night.